today, God. We've come to worship your name. We've come to give you praise, God. We thank you, Lord, for liberty. We thank you that you're our King, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We've come to lift up your name. We've come to, hallelujah, put you in the place that you belong, Lord. We've come to worship you tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Be in our midst, Lord. Lift heavy hearts here tonight, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Save souls, Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, we thank you, we love you, we lift up a praise. Even right now, before we begin to sing, Lord Jesus, we just lift up a praise to your name because you're worthy. Hallelujah, because you're our Savior, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you came to worship the King tonight? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that we can come and be in his presence? Not everybody experiences that. Hallelujah, but I want to magnify his name here tonight. Hallelujah. Worship the King. Worship the King. We are in his presence to magnify his name. When we seek his face, his glory fills his place as we Sing that one more time. Worship the King. Oh, worship, worship the King. We are in His presence to magnify. On, sing that once again. One more time. Oh, worship the King. We came to worship. We are in His presence to magnify. When we seek His face, His glory fills His name. As we were. at your heart tonight.
Bless me now, oh bless me now, my Lord. Oh bless me now, oh bless, bless me now, my Savior. Oh bless me now, I come, I come to to Thee. I need. Just lift up your heart to him and sing that. Every every hour I need thee. Oh, won't you bless me now, my Savior? I come to to thee. One more time. I need thee. I need thee. Oh. It's all right to just come and ask him for a blessing. Oh, bless my Savior. I come to I love you, Lord. And I singing how I love you Jesus how I
We love you, God, because you first loved us, God. When we were unlovable, God, you commended your love towards us while we were yet sinners. Our love is a response to your great love for us, God, that you've shown us, God. And we thank you, God. If you hear it nowhere else in the world tonight, you're going to hear it here in Manchester, Connecticut. We love you and we thank you for loving us. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How grateful are you that you've been called by Jesus? How happy are you that he loved you while you were yet in your sins and couldn't see your way out? And he saw you here tonight worshiping and praising him. God bless you. So wonderful to be in the house of God tonight. Glad everybody made it here safely. Amen. Had a little scare there. But we made it. When we got the warning, it said, shelter in place, there's a tornado coming. I did what any self-respecting man would do. I went outside and tried to watch it. But after it passed, the sun came out again. And I listened to the radio people, and they said this, the storm is over. And maybe, I don't know, just something jumped in my spirit. Maybe tonight, the Lord is going to tell someone tonight, the storm is over. The sun is shining one more time. Hallelujah. So grateful for the love of God. Amen. Well, let's take that feeling and let's put it in the offering basket tonight. Can we have our offering helpers come? If you're watching us live tonight, I'd like to give you an opportunity to be a part of joining what God is doing here in our great church. You can go to our Facebook page and our church page, fgichurch.org, and give now. And you can be a part. And thank you for your consideration for God's work here. And that's... I don't know, just thinking about everything that God's doing. I Think of, you know, if a storm came through here, all the money we'd have to put out. Not just in our homes, but in the church and damages. But how many we can thank God for the things that didn't happen? Amen. Have you ever seen a car accident go by and, wow, I'm grateful it wasn't me, but you think about maybe the things that could have happened and didn't, and you can maybe give God some gratitude tonight in your offering. Amen. It didn't touch you tonight. Amen? I look back and our kids are going back to school and I look back and I see the beautiful Imakpari children worshiping God. That's part of your giving too. Yes, it's their family's teaching and sharing and leading their family, but it's our church coming together and supporting one another. That makes it possible for all of our children to have that support in this season, going back to school. Amen? Let's look to the Lord as we give tonight. Father, we thank you so much that you've put us on the giving end, God. God, we may not always have filet mignon, but God, we're blessed. God, and we thank you, God. And tonight we want to put back in this offering, God, our gratitude and love and appreciation for all that you're doing. Bless every giver, God. You've promised that you would give to givers, God. Over and over, God, you've given to us, God, in ways that we may not even recognize and understand, but we're thankful for those times, God. Bless every giver and everyone who has a heart to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Ooh, and worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. And worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, who and worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Praise the Lord. Don't you love God tonight? Can we just take a moment? Let's take a moment right now. Just love God. I love what Brother Dave said. You know, let's just, let's just thank God tonight for being God. Who knows, who knows what this world tried to throw at us, that, but God stopped before it ever got to us. Amen. We just, just love God for a moment. Thank God tonight. God is good. Just, just take a moment. Come on now. Hallelujah. Jesus. Love God. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Do you know God's eyes are always upon you? The eyes of the Lord are always right to you. And I thank God for that. God is always watching me. He's always watching out for me. Why? Because he loves me. Amen? You know, I always got my eye on my kids. Why? Because I love them. Amen? And that's God's love to us tonight. Praise God. Praise the Lord tonight. Let's just offer up a word of prayer to God. We love you tonight, Jesus. God, we feel your love and your presence. God, thank you for the sun that shines after the storm, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, that in our lives, God, sometimes the clouds may still be there. But if we could see past the clouds, the sun is still shining. We just thank you for that. Thank you for your spirit, your word. Thank you for reaching your people tonight. And with your love, God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, all of our young people back in school now. Anybody still got to go back to school yet? Looks like every Reverend Mancini. <laughs> I would it would I would pay money to see Reverend Mancini in a school class teaching kindergarten kids or Come on. Do you think they'd boo his jokes? Probably, right? Probably. I think so. Praise God. Tonight, if you have your Bible, we're going to turn to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Wonderful story. We're not going to read all of it, just kind of paraphrase some of it and just talk about the parts that God wants to talk about tonight. Joshua chapter 6. I'm going to start in verses 1. I'm going to read down to verse 3. One to three. It says this, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, we know a lot of us in here may know the story of Jericho. He also had the priests with the trumpets and the ram's horn uh, once for six straight days. And on the seventh day, they all went around seven times. Amen. And he had them blow that trumpet and the people shouted, and we know the story, the walls fell flat. Amen. I love that part. It says the walls fell flat. It wasn't, there was no stone left unturned uh, when God got done with it. But I just want to focus on these three parts. The Lord just shared some things about uh, these three verses that I just read to you. Now Jericho, they had just come through the, Red, uh, the Jordan River. They're coming out of the wilderness, the Bible says, and they're coming into what is God had promised as the promised land unto them. But standing in their way was one place, actually a couple places, but Jericho is the first one that they come against. And it was uh, uh, the city of Jericho with big walls and uh, thick walls, if you, if you do some research. And here they are. Now, some scholars believe that 
from when God first gave them the promise and talked to them about there's going to be a promise unto you, they say it was 45 years up from that point to this point right here. 45 years, 42, 43, 44, whatever, you know, would depend upon which scholar you believe in or listen to. About 45 years, the promise of this promised land, this land that was plentiful, this land that uh, was flowing with milk and honey, 45 years, the promise had been uh, proclaimed that God was going to give these people, the children of Israel, after they came out of Egypt, this land. God gave a promise, a proclamation to the people that you're not going to be in your current state forever, but God was going to give you something greater than the wilderness they were currently in. Praise God for that. Can everybody say praise God for his promises? So you're not going to be in the wilderness forever. You're not going to be in this wandering, this, this uh, um, searching place forever but now we're, we find out through, through, through a time that it was about 45 years from the initial promise until they came up to the gates of Jericho. We have a hard time waiting in line at Dunkin' Donuts. Nevertheless, waiting 45 years or five years or, 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 or uh, one year, one week. They waited 45 years. Sometimes you've got to hold on until the promise of God comes to you. Come on. Let's, let's, let's talk about this tonight. Amen? This promise that God gives, it represents victory. Okay? This promise that God gave, this, this land, or, or look at personally in your life. Let's take this story tonight and let's, let's uh, uh, take it out of this specific time frame and let's apply this to you right now. Now, I'm not talking about 45 years. I'm talking about what are you waiting on? What are you waiting for God to do? Or what are you waiting for uh, something to happen in your life? Amen? So this promised land for you, it represents a victory over something in your life. Anybody ever waited for victory over something in their life? Hallelujah. It represents overcoming specific obstacles in your life. Sometimes it represents coming through the storm like Brother David mentioned. But here we are. Sometimes you got to wait until the thing happens. Sometimes you have to hold on till the storm passes by. Sometimes you got to trust God when it don't look good. Sometimes you have to believe in God's promise, whether it's one day, one week, one year, or a hundred years later. And got anybody a hundred years? Thank God. Nobody quite that old brother, Galen. Getting close. You know, sometimes when you're waiting for God to do something special in your life, sometimes you can say it's been too long. And you can almost give up hope. could almost give up hope that you would ever receive or even reach the destination that you've dreamed of. How many have ever had a dream in God? Maybe, maybe it's for spiritual things, but maybe your dream in God is just simply some natural things that you're looking for God to do in your life. Who knows what it is tonight? Don't give up hope. Some may have even forgotten what God said he was going to do. You know those times of prayer. You're down before God, believing God, and you hear God, maybe not an audible voice, but the peace and the presence in, you, uh, in that moment. You can feel God talking to you about something, something specific in your life. Hallelujah. What you got to do until that thing comes is hold on to the promise. Everybody say, hold on to the promise. Sometimes you can't even remember the vision that you had because it's been so long. There's been so many storms in the middle of you waiting. Amen? 
Sometimes even, even the conditions of life that, that come your way, they, they drown out the dream, the vision, the place that God says He wants you to be or the dream or vision that you have in your life. But hallelujah, this day, after all that time, this day, hallelujah, in this moment of time, God brought him to the brink of Jericho. Past Jericho and past some of these other cities, you know what it is? It's God, God's promised land for the people. Maybe tonight, some of you have been wandering. I don't know how long you've been wandering. Maybe somebody's wandering here tonight, but tonight if you hear the word of God, you may be on the brink of reaching places in your life if you hear the word of God tonight and what God's got to say. Amen? I believe some are on the brink. Hallelujah. Facing right in front of us the things that God would have before us. So they came to Jericho. Now, Jericho wasn't exactly a, a huge city. Wasn't the greatest city. But one thing Jericho had, Jericho was, in, it was compassed with great walls. Some, some towers in the wall, they say, were above 30 feet high and, and, and like 6 to 8 feet wide of just, of just brick and stone. Huge fortifications. And God says, this place is yours? you got to go through this place? God, you must be crazy. Like, I don't got my, I don't got my drill, I don't got my, I don't got my hammers, and God says, you're not going to need to do anything except walk around, blow your trumpet, and shout unto the Most High God. Like, no dynamite? Can't even have dynamite? I'll take one bulldozer, Lord. Just one bulldozer. Nope. God says, you're not going to need, you're not gonna need any of those things. But here they are at this one place, Jericho. And God, <clears throat> this wasn't the only city that they were going to face. But this was the biggest one with the greatest fortifications around it. It seemed like the biggest obstacle that they would face. You know how sometimes you have, you have things that you got to do and you try to tackle the biggest one first? Or you got a project on the house, and you try to, try to tackle the biggest part of that project first. Get the biggest thing done, right? Well, that's what they came up. They came against the biggest obstacle first, the walls of Jericho. Now, I want you to understand tonight, I'm not talking about just a natural city, but I want you to see something spiritual about this city, because the city Jericho rep represents something more than just a biblical city in the Bible. This, bib, uh, uh, this, this place, Jericho, represents some of your biggest struggles in life. Jericho is a representation of some of the strongholds that we face in this current day. It's the things you're facing right now in front of you. Maybe it's something on your job. Maybe what you're facing in your home. Maybe what you're facing on the inside that, no, that you've never talked to anybody about, but you can see it's a wall, it's a stronghold that needs to be broken through. Amen? Hallelujah. Jericho represents those big problems that you are currently entangled with that sometimes seem so impossible to overcome. Sometimes this stronghold of Jericho in our lives, sometimes it represents our regrets. Sometimes our regrets are the biggest thing that hold people back. It can, re it can represent your resentment. It can represent anger, fear of rejection, loneliness, laziness, lack of ambition, lack of commitment, even downright a rebellion. It can represent the broken relationships in your life. I'm, I'm talking about Jericho. I'm talking about Jericho, but I believe God wants us to get something, get something through to it. I believe like Brother David said, somebody tonight, the storm is going to pass you by. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. The storm is going to pass you by. See, this Jericho, it can represent broken relationships. 
It can represent a mountain of debt that you feel like you're in. The stronghold of Jericho can represent spirit of lust, spirit of envy, all these things that come to our lives, all these things that we're faced on a daily basis. It represents the thing that you have come so close to attaining, but yet you seem so far away from actually attaining that thing. You ever come so close and you think like, I got it this time? Just seem to not quite have it yet, right? Anybody ever been there? I feel like, I, I feel like Brother James, I, I feel like I've come so close, but then something, some wall rises up, and it seems like I'm not as close as I thought I was. Something always seems to come up in your path. Just when I feel like I'm doing good. Just when I feel I've got the victory. Man, I just crossed over the Jordan, Brother David. What's more miraculous than that? I just had something great happen to me, and yet I come to the brink of Jericho. Can I catch a break? Can I just do it right for a little while? See, this is what Jericho represents. It represents that one place in our life. That one big thing that seems to always be that obstacle in our path, no matter how good you thought you were doing, you always seem to end up at some point, you must face Jericho. Because if you cannot get Jericho, Jericho's always going to be there to get you back. Because if the walls of Jericho don't come back, uh, excuse me, if the walls of Jericho don't come down, the people of Jericho, the spirit of Jericho, will always rise up again and remind you they are still there. Hallelujah. It represents that thing that seems so close, yet so, so far away. Represents that thing that you've waited on, that you've dreamed about, that you've thought about, that thing that you really want to see God do in you and through you, and yet there seems to be a Jericho there. This fortified city of Jericho represents the things that you don't want to face. You ever not want to face something? Hey, Brother Chris, you ever, you ever on your job, just like, I don't want to go in tomorrow. You mean tomorrow? Okay, all right. No, you, you know that there's this big project you got to do, and, 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 it's, and it's stressful, and there's, there's so many components that you have to deal with. It'd just be so much easier. <coughs> <clears throat> um, I'm calling out sick today. <coughs> yeah, but see, see, sometimes we call out sick on our problems. We get so close to reaching what God wants us to reach, and yet it just seems like it's going to be too difficult. <coughs> I'm calling out today, God. I'm calling out an audible, God. We're going to do something different today, God. I'm not going to go and face that thing. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go swim, or, swim in a river today, God. I don't know. I'm just. Sometimes God is longing for us to face the thing that always stops us. But yet we're like, maybe tomorrow. Maybe, maybe another time. But I'm telling you right now, God was saying, Jericho is straightly shut up because of you. And so if you today will hear the voice of God, God is going to cause those walls to come down once and for all. You can 
cannot get to your victory. You cannot attain your promises. You cannot reach your end goal, some of you, until you face your Jericho wall. You have to face what you don't want to face. You got to fight even though you don't feel like fighting. You got to keep fighting even though you don't feel you got the power to fight it. You cannot reach your destination without going through something to get you there. We love going to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. There is nine states between Connecticut and South Carolina. This year, Brother David, we're like, I'm going to go to New Hampshire, which is two states away. Sometimes the destination is so wonderful and we want to go, but we just don't want to have to go through what we know we're going to have to go through to get us there. If you know me, me and Heights are not the best friends right now. We have a little, we have a little argument going on. So we get to New Hampshire. And what do you think the family wants to do? Yep. They want to go up Mount Washington. Are you kidding me? Can I, can I go nine states away and go to the beach, please? It's all flatland. And how many have ever climbed Mount Washington in a car or a truck or motorcycle, whatever? Okay. If you're afraid of heights, don't go. Even worse, if you are a control freak and you can't go on certain rides without being the driver, don't let somebody else drive you up Mount Washington. You cannot reach your destination without sometimes having to go on the journey. I won't tell you everything I went through going up the mountain, but I will tell you this, probably one of the most beautiful sights I've ever stood on. We went on a day that was cloudy, and you're like, oh, that's horrible. Have you ever pictured yourself flying because the clouds were below us. And here we are, standing above the clouds. Brother Dave, we were above the storm. You know what we had to do to get above that storm? We had to take a journey. We had to go through some twists and turns. We had to go through some obstacles. We had to go on some dirt roads. We have to go near the edge of the cliff. But you know what? That destination on top was so picture perfect. I took beautiful pictures of my family far away. I was close to the safety of whatever I can grab a hold of. And they were there taking beautiful pictures. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes you got to go through the journey to reach where you got to reach. Amen? We don't want to. Sometimes, I, as a kid, I remember kicking and screaming. I remember, I remember as an adult kicking and screaming. Not quite. But the destination, the dream that's at the end, the, 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 the victory that is at the end is worth all the journeys. It's worth whatever you kind of go through to get through, to break through, to reach the place that God not me, not me, not anybody else that God wants you to be. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you this. This is, this is crazy what I'm about to say. God doesn't promise life is going to be all roses and butterflies. 
God doesn't always promise the road is going to be easy, Brother Bill. God didn't always say every day at work is going to be bliss and they'll give you a raise every single day. Which he did. That's not what he promised. God didn't promise in the world that we're faced in right now that that there isn't going to be some hardships. There isn't going to be some things that the Christian has to stand strong and firm on. God didn't promise you wouldn't be that way, but he promised this. I will bring you through all of them. Hallelujah. David said this. He said this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod. Why don't I have to fear? Because the rod and his staff, they comfort me. You may have to go through, but you're not going through alone. Woo, Jesus. I'm not saying you have to face trials. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not one of those who say, oh, your life isn't complete till you've gone through eight trials. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about what you're being faced with right now. Don't settle for this side of Jericho when God says on the other side of Jericho is the promise. Hallelujah. You cannot give up because you face a wall. We got a lot of people in this church. I love these people. You know why? Because throughout my 40 years of being in this church, I've seen so many of you fight through your walls. So many of you said, you know what? I got this going on, but I'm still going to get up here and I'm going to praise God. You know what? I got this going on, but you know what? I'm still going to walk through those doors, hallelujah, and receive what God wants. You know what? I got things going on, but I'm still going to the convalescent home. I'm still going visiting. I'm still going tracking. I'm still doing my ministry. I'm still going through. You don't give up because you face the wall. The children of Israel came out of Egypt. And what did the first thing they came to? Yep, the Red Sea, whoever was thinking it in their mind. Yep. First thing they came to, they got Pharaoh over here. They got the Red Sea right here. You're like, you got to be kidding me. We'd be Facebooking that thing all over. We'd be like, look at where I am right now. I just came out of Egypt, and now I hear him in front of the Red Sea. Sister Chandra would be taking beautiful pictures of the Red Sea. It'd be pretty, beautiful quotes. Children of Israel, what did they do? Came to the Red Sea. What happened? They turned around. Yes, you're right. They went through the Red Sea. I love you too, son. Yes, you get ice cream later, definitely. <laughs> they came to an impossible, an impossible sea. But yet God was not going to bring them out over there to trip them up right here. God did not save you for you not to reach your destination. God did not save you to be stuck in the middle. God did not save you to be stuck at the bottom of the walls of Jericho. Hebrew boys, what did they do? They made a choice. They faced the fiery furnace. But guess who came through the fiery furnace? Three Hebrew boys. Daniel. Daniel faced the lion's den. But guess who came through the lion's den? 
Daniel, why? He trusted in God. What am I saying? You may face some things. You may face lions. You may face Red Seas. I don't know what you're going to face, but you got a decision when you face it that I'm going through. I said, I'm going through. <coughs> David said this, for I have run through a troop. He said, I have run through a troop, through an army of soldiers. I've run through them. I'm going through. Say it. I'm going through. I'm going through. Hallelujah. The point is, you may be going through something, but God is going to help you get through it. Remember this, Theo's favorite scripture, I can do all things through Christ. So no matter what you're faced with, through Christ, you can face it. I, has anybody heard in the last two days of a plane called the Kermit, the Kermit plane? Anybody? Nickname Kermit. Well, I'm going to tell you about Kermit. Kermit is a research plane that, threw, that flew in the middle, middle of Hurricane Dorian, right there, out in the Atlantic Ocean right now. And they have videos of this research plane flying through this storm. And I was happy. I would have been happy to be on Mount Washington, not up in that plane. Amen? Because in, in this plane, the picture, it shows the cockpit. shows all the skies around it are dark. And all you see is lightning and flashes. And, and you can tell that there's turbulence kind of kind of rocking the plane. And, and you can almost feel the wind and hear the wind. Did any of you hear about a plane that crashed that went through Hurricane Dorian? Anybody? Why, you know why? Because it didn't crash. It had the ability to go through the fiercest Category 5 storm. Why? Because it was built for this. It was made for this. And let me tell you something right now. You may be going through a storm, but if you have Christ in your life and you rely and trust on Christ, I'm going to tell you right now, you are built for this. You are built to go through the storm, not get stuck in the storm, not sit at the bottom of the wall, but God wants you to go through the wall. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. When thou goest through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Everybody say, I'm going through. You may feel like you're in the most difficult of times, the most desperate of times in your life. But trust in God. He's going to help you get through it. In verse 2, God shared with the children of Israel some powerful words. It says this, And the Lord God said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. See, Jericho is all locked up. They're locked up tight. You want to know why? Because they are afraid of the children of Israel. And God just proclaimed to them, see, I have given Jericho into thine hand. I'm going to tell you, whatever you are facing, from the front row to the back, you may not be facing anything, but I proclaim it from God that, see, Jericho has already been given into your hand. See, the thing is this, you don't have to fight this battle. You just have to follow through on God's word. God already won the battle. God already shut the doors up. God already promised victory. Woo. Jesus, hallelujah. They are already defeated. What's that thing standing in your way? It's already defeated. See, Jesus, I 
I'm going to go back here for just a second. I want you to notice something very specific. Never quite saw it like this. You know, I, you know how you read the Bible and read a story a thousand times, and you can read it the thousand and first time, and something new kind of just catches your eye. See, if you know the end of the story, you know they never had to fight Jericho. Walked around it, blew the trumpet, shouted. Walls came down flat, took the spoils. But in verse 3, it says, And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war. You shall compass the city, all ye men of war. The men of war, along with the priests, those that are carrying the ark and those that are carrying the trumpet, the men of war are the ones that are going to help overcome Jericho's walls. The men of war. Interesting, seeing they never had, they never had to raise up any arms. Called on the men of war. And women of war. Let's throw that in there too. Even though he knew they would never have to lift up their hands. They would never have to take a sword. They would never have to take a spear. God said, I want the men of war there. Because the men of war are more than, more than just men with instruments of warfare like swords and, and spears and weapons. There's, there's a mentality to the men of war. There's, there's a mentality that men of war have beyond weapons. See, the men of war are the ones who are going to do whatever it takes to bring a breakthrough through the strongholds that they are faced with. Men of war figure it out. They get together. They get together with the generals. They say, how are we going to do this? How's the best way to do this? And they get together. They figure it out. Men of war, they seek for whichever weakness the enemy has so that they can break through any stronghold the enemy may have. How many want to overcome personal obstacles that are in your way? How many want to overcome something? If you want to overcome something, if you don't, that's okay. If you don't have nothing, that's all right. But if you do, become a man of war. Become a man of war. See, the man of war, the man of war is the one who sometimes, though no one else may want to do it, the men of war, they're going to pull up their sleeves. The men of war are going to get into the trenches and get dirty. The men of war are the ones who don't mind getting a little dirty to fight the battle. Jesus. The men of war are the ones who are willing to sacrifice not only their life to save somebody else's life. They're willing to do whatever it takes to win a war. God wants men of war who may see problems in front of them, but they don't accept that defeat. Men of war see walls, but men of war see what's beyond the wall even better. Hallelujah. Men of war see the destination. I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to settle for this regret that I feel. I'm not going to settle for feeling rejection. I'm not going to settle for depression. I'm not going to settle for regrets. I'm not going to settle for loneliness. I'm not going to settle for lust. I'm not going to settle for those things. Yes, they may be encompassed around me right now, but I'm not going to settle for where I am right now. I am not settling for those things. You know what? You know who was a man of war? Jesus. Jesus was a man of war. <coughs> Don't get me wrong. 
I'm not saying he was out there with tanks. I'm saying Jesus rolled up his sleeves. And when he was about to face his Jericho, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and fought one of the greatest battles you can face on his knees. Jesus. Jesus was like you and I. He said, I, don't, I really don't want this cup. I really, I really don't want this cup. Let it pass from me. So many of us, we're like that. Like, God, I can see what I'm about to face. I don't want to have to face this. I don't want to have to deal with this. I don't want to have to go through this. But Jesus, the man of war, said, nevertheless, not my will but thine will be done. And Jesus went to the cross, hallelujah, with all victory, hallelujah. To many he looked defeated, but he was actually gaining the greatest victory over sin and death you could ever imagine. It didn't settle for his current situation. Don't settle for where you are right now. <clears throat> the Bible says this, it says, when the kingdom suffereth violence, the violent take it by force. What does that mean? Is God causing, telling us to go out in the streets and be violent? No, quite the contrary. Violent, take it by force. It's just those that say, I'm not going to settle for this current situation. I, through God, through the power of God, I can do something about it. I can help make a difference. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to stand here. I got my own obstacles, but you know what? I got my own walls, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to still parent, even though I got my own walls to face. I'm going to still go and testify, even though I got my own walls to face. I'm going to still go and be a Sunday school teacher, even though I'm facing my own. It don't matter. Warriors will still get out there, no matter what they're faced with. I'm not a hockey guy. But these hockey, have you ever looked at a hockey guy? They got no teeth. They got no teeth. Literally, they don't. They have no teeth. I've seen them. I've seen, I seen, I seen, I watch, I watch the sh TV, and, and here they are, hockey guys. They got four teeth knocked out right on the ice, and they show, they zoom in and all. The, and you know what they do? They say, put me back in. Put me back in. Come on, coach. Put me back in. I may have fallen, but I'm getting right back up. I'm not settling for this current situation. There's a goal to win. There's a game to win. There's an obstacle that's in my way. There's a team I got to defeat. There's, there's a destination I got to reach. Put me in, coach. Men of war. Maybe you've fallen. Maybe you face some obstacles. But if you love God, and you follow God, and you read your Bible, the Bible says this, though a righteous man falls seven times, he will pick himself up again. What are you going to do when you fall? What are you going to do when you fall? Oh, poor me. Oh, I've fallen. I won't say it. Oh, I've fallen. This obstacle. Get up. Get back up. Don't settle for the walls of Jericho standing before you. God has got something for each and every one of us to accomplish, and we got to get through Jericho to get there. You got to be willing to fight when you don't want to fight. You got to be willing to overcome those walls. It's time to it's time to put the issues behind and settle in and hallelujah and, and and keep fighting the issues that face you. Jesus came through Gethsemane. Let me tell you this. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you have to stay in your sin. Jesus didn't die on the cross. So you have to stay feeling rejection. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you would always feel lonely. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you could just make it through life with your depression. 
Jesus died on the cross so that you can overcome every one of those things. Hallelujah. He didn't die for no reason. He didn't die so you could half get out of, the, half get out of your problem. D- Jesus didn't die so half your walls will fall down. Jesus died to give you total victory in your life. Do not settle where you are. Hallelujah. If you feel God, there's something that you need to overcome, then go to God. He's the one who will bring you through every single time now now is the time today is your day we know the end of the story they walked around and the walls fell flat flat is flat nothing standing on one another They were able to, God even paved the road that they had to walk through to get to the promised land. Now what about you? You know the story in the Bible. Now how's the ending of your story going to end? How's your story? How are are your Jericho walls doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if they could fall flat in the Bible, just think what God can do for you tonight. Let's stand to our feet. We got a lot of different people here tonight. Some new some newer, some older. But tonight, if you're facing an obstacle that you know should not be there, maybe it's of your own making, maybe it's somebody else's making, maybe you just feel like the enemy is out to get you, whatever it is, you don't have to settle for any of it. You can overcome. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So if you're here tonight, And you feel there's something tonight. Tonight I stand at the walls of Jericho. If that's you, maybe you're not saved. Maybe sin. Maybe you've tried to make make steps towards God, but it just seems like something keeps pulling you back. It seems like you try to do good, but you can't do good without committing your ways unto God. So tonight, would you come? Would you commit your way unto the Lord, whoever it is in this house, that wall that keeps coming back? Maybe that wall is alcohol, that alcohol bottle keeps calling your name, and every time you try to push it away, somehow you make your way back to that thing. Come, if that's you, come. Hallelujah. Maybe it's drugs tonight. Maybe, maybe you just... You ju- that drugs have become the thing in your life that helps you ease what you feel is pain. Well, tonight I want God. I want you to know that God can ease that pain in your life. God can take away those things and those feelings. Come to him tonight. So if that's you, come. Now, church, if you just feel there's an area that needs to be overcome, whoever you are, I want you to come. We're going to have our singers come. We're going to worship our God because God is good tonight. God, somebody's storm is passing over. If that's you, I want you to come. Come in faith to God tonight, believing that God is out there to help you. Hallelujah, overcome. I'm going to do it, God. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to fight this battle, God. God, God, that thing may seem strong in my life, but God, you've made me stronger than all of those things. It's through you. It's by you. It's in you that I can do it all. In Jesus' name, I look to you tonight, God. Come, if that's you. Come focus in on God tonight. Let God, let God help you. Hallelujah, Jesus. If that's you, come to God tonight. Let him help you. God, I'm coming. I thank you, God. It's going to be new. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a good night. God, I'm going I'm to sleep in peace tonight, God. God, I'm going to sleep in peace. I don't need to take pain. I don't need to take any pills tonight, God. God, let your, let your peace, God, let it settle in my life and let me, let me sleep in peace tonight, Lord Jesus. I'm going to fight this battle. 
I'm going to fight through this thing, God. God has tried me for a long time, but today, today's the day I've come to the brink, hallelujah, of the walls, and the walls are going to fall down. So tonight I give it to you. I fight tonight. Jesus in the garden, he fought. So tonight, I fight tonight. This is my garden, God. I'm fighting for you, Jesus. I'm fighting for you, Jesus, in your name. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, da 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 bo shata da 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 mo sataya. Jesus. Because of Jesus, every battle has been won. Because of Jesus, we have eternal life. All our hope is in Jesus Christ. Every battle has been won Because of Jesus We have eternal life and All our hope is in Jesus Christ Hallelujah Hallelujah To the King Who's covered sin for all? Alleluia, Alleluia. To the King of all, Alleluia, yes, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah, yes, hallelujah. 
raise your hands and love on Jesus. Thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight, Father. We thank you for your word. We're more than overcomers because of whose we are. We're yours. Thank you for the word that encouraged and strengthened so many tonight, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many came through the storm? How many with that word was just for you tonight? Love that you were made for this because greater is he that's in you and even if that doppler shows another storm coming he's still greater inside of you still greater god bless you share your love with one another don't forget what friday night is barbecue chicken dinner spread the word and be a blessing to the house of god bring somebody with you god bless you.